19 minutes after 7 o'clock. 75 degrees here at The Source, WOCA, broadcasting live from the yeah. Paddock Mall. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Larry. Bees, you over there? I am just grand. How about yourself? Pretty good. Good. Get up. Yay. 14, uh, <laughs> the, the 14th. It's August 14th. Yes, it is. August 14th, 2014. It's Thursday. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking beginning of the day. Some puffy clouds out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so there you go. Puffy. Uh, got a good uh, good program scheduled for today. Let me tell you what I want to do. It's 7.35. We've got a, um, the city of Ocala is trying to figure out how to govern noises. The noise ordinance uh, issue is um, something we've tackled before. Oh. Many cities have tackled these things before. Sometimes they, it's not that... It, it, it's defining what a loud noise is. That, oh. Or defining like when you should be labeled, allowed to have loud noises. And what is loud noise, you know? Is oh. a lawnmower a loud noise? Yeah. Well, I think it is. Yeah, or if you, you have know. a concert, that's a really loud noise. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that, well, in that case, you would have, a, have to fill out a, a form to get, and get a... Approval. You have to oh, be approved. I see. But I mean, just in general, if you're driving down the road, you know, you've you've had these happen for you when you were in the like, parking lot, mm-hmm. and there's somebody driving through the parking lot, and they've got their radio or their whatever they call it, their music machine. Yeah. They don't call them stereos anymore. What do they call them? No, boombox. No, not even boombox. <laughs> whatever, box, whatever it is. That's old. They're players. They're there's bass things in the trunk. That so you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? So it's, a, it's really, yeah. really loud. And, and uh, so the city wants to have a way to govern that, a way to... Um, oh, gee. Well, I don't yeah. see anything wrong with that. Yeah. It's just it's just defining it that's the hard part. Uh-huh. So I wanted to see what you thought about defining it and and it's hard to to talk in decibels because I mean I mean it's hard to talk about it because it's hard to imagine, you know, what is the right decibel level for something. The the, the county of Marion County came up with a um an idea for this back in 2008 uh-huh. and theirs was uh let's see micro 20 micro newtons. I had uh-huh. to look it up. I remember this story. Gosh. Uh, a decibel. Let's see. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, and they, they, they go through the whole thing of defining a decibel, et cetera, et cetera. Uh-huh. And the police, of course, would have to have a device to measure uh, uh-huh. loudness and measure it not only from 10 feet away, but from 100 feet away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And would it only be effective on city property or would oh, that go to pu- public, see, I mean, you, private property, too? Thank you. That's exactly that where I want to go, but I want to go there at 735. Okay. So that's what we'll do yes. at 735. Uh, there's also, well, there's something else I'll tell you too. It's more, actually more serious. But, oh, okay. Well, more bothersome, but, but, but this is something we can actually do something about. Uh, news Bites today at 835. We'll take the news from around the world, around the nation, around the state, mm-hmm. and we'll, uh, and around town, we'll talk about it. Veterans News today. Hank Whittier will be here with his guys, the, uh, vets. They come in here every Thursday and do this and just love having them in here. And, uh, it's such an honor to be able to say that they are our friends. Yeah, they and gave all. Andrea L. Delgado coming on at 9.35. She's a member of the Earth Justice Policy and Legislation Team. Mm-hmm. She's written, oh no, she's coming in to talk about strengthening the Environmental Protection Agency's proposed worker protection standard proposal for agricultural workers. Yeah. Phew, I just felt something fly over my head. Yeah. Because that yeah. is over my head. But we'll Farmers. find out. We're, we're going to learn. <laughs> Nine thirty-five. We will learn what her issue is and make a decision if we agree with her or not. Okay. Doctor Joel Wallach at ten o five. He's a certified and licensed doctor of naturopathic medicine. He's a veterinarian. He worked with the National Science Foundation. He's written a book called Epigenetics: The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission. Uh-huh. Did you see that wind go over my head? Same, yeah. same thing here. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like okay. it's easy in here. It's today. loining time today, Robin. <laughs> We're gonna loin something today. Yay! <laughs> I like learning. We're gonna be loined. By the time we're done, we're That's loined. Right. Exactly. <laughs> be loined. <laughs> uh, Dr. Peter Andrew Sacco. <laughs> what are you laughing? Uh, he's a TV okay. host of Niagara's Most Haunted, and apparently up in Niagara Falls. Yeah. They have a lot of hauntings. <laughs> Yeah, but I love the other host too. It seems they go hand in hand. He's the radio host of a show called Mental Health Matters. <laughs> <laughs> What's worrying you? It's just too funny. <laughs> the two topics. It is kind of funny. 
You know how people describe ghosts as a mist. It was, it was like, like a mist. Well, yeah. Isn't that what Niagara Falls is? <laughs> That's right. It Maybe is. they just seen water vapor. Queen of the mist. That's how it got its name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, he's written a book. This is fascinating, really. I'm, we're just having dopey fun, I guess. Uh, his book is called Paranormal Niagara. I'm looking forward to it, actually. Yeah, I think Cases so. of the Mysterious and the Word I Hate to Say the Macabre. Because it looks like it should, it should be macabre. Yeah. Macabre. It does. The Mysterious and the Macabre. Yeah, I wonder Brr. why they threw an R in there. I don't know. Maybe they thought the uh, Tim Rimmel at 1105. Yes. Got to learn something with him, too. <laughs> from him. He's a minister and a musician and... <sighs> <laughs> you don't have to say it. I don't have to say it. Why not? His book is called Going Gay. There you go. <laughs> now, why would I not say that? I don't know. It's It says here, my journey, not mine. No. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. The subtitle of the book, My Journey from Evangelical Christian Minister to Self-Acceptance, Love, Life, and Meaning. So... I presume he was a minister or is a minister and decided, you know, there's women I've been dating. <laughs> I somehow I don't think that's for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be the way it is. Uh, sure. It's got to sure. be the way it is. You're out there. Hey. Yeah. How come all you guys are so excited about her? Yeah. I think you guys are more excited than she is. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Well, you figured it out. Uh <laughs> 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 well, we're very well rounded here. Uh, okay, and and then uh, what are we doing? A fun with Joe? Oh, fun with Joe yes. with Dan. Fun with yes. Joe with Dan. Dan is is going to do fun with Joe with us today, and yeah. because Joe Martone is up in South Carolina visiting family, uh, Dan Martone is here to <laughs> to cover all the bases that Joe normally does, including fun with Joe. Yeah, Dan's got to be exhausted by now. He just and I've been trying to cater to his interest in movies, but today uh, I'm going for eponyms. Okay. Eponyms are things that are named after people. Oh, okay. Okay. Things uh, named after so people. So I will. So that yeah, that's the game. I will tell you the thing. I will describe it. Okay. And you, and you no no. I will tell you the person. Hold on, hold on. Well, I'll describe the person because sometimes when I name the person, that's a kind of a dead giveaway, isn't it? Uh huh. So then you have to tell me what was named after the person. Okay. Oh, okay. See how that works. So yeah. You'll find it. it That's going to be, be fun. It's self-explanatory when we get there. Yeah, but it's mind-taxing, and like you always say. It, it is mind-taxing, and, and I think uh, it was very hard for me. I did it this morning. Mm -hmm. Very hard. Um, but you guys are really good at this, and, and I actually don't think I'd be as good at it as you. I just pretend I know these things. Yeah, this will be fun. This I have the Alex Trebek edge because I have the answer in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, on... Um, our segment that we normally do with Galen Unold, Galen Unold is on vacation in the Keys with his family. Uh, Tom Davis, who normally sits in for Galen when he's on vacation, is also on vacation. He's in Aruba with his yes. wife. Uh, and so Rob and I have been doing the uh, Life South segment uh, alone these last few days. Mm -hmm. So we'll do it again today. And today the topic is um, based on, I, I got the idea based on an experience yesterday. I'm not going to name the restaurant, but we went to a restaurant. Yeah. And they had on the restaurant, what was that thing I wanted? What was that a tuna here? melt. No, 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 no. Oh, patty melt. A patty melt. Yes. A patty melt. A uh -huh. patty melt is typically like a hamburger on rye bread with, with cheese on it, right? Yeah, and, grilled and, rye. And whatever else you want on it, right? Yeah. So the menu said you could replace the hamburger with a chicken patty. Mm hmm So I thought, okay, well, that's what I'll do. <laughs> it seems <laughs> like everybody says it's healthier. Yeah. I was in the mood for it. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. So I say, I say to the lady, you know, I want the, uh, what is it called again? Patty, patty melt. I want the patty melt. <laughs> yes. And she says, well, do you want it well done? How do you want it done? And I said, well, actually, I don't want the beef. I want the, the chicken patty. Oh, then you, you want a bun. No, I want the, the patty melt. Mm -hmm. and, she, and I say, it says it right here on the menu. And she stops me. I know what it says on the menu. Yeah, she was very rude. It, I know what it says on the menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I said, okay, I'm sorry. I just... I'm trying to point out that the menu gives me the option I can replace the chicken with the uh, beef with a chicken patty. Right. Still right. on the right. same kind of bread. Right. But but this is, yeah, but if you get chicken, you put it on a bun. You don't put it on rye bread. I said, okay, never mind. You know what? Just give me the normal patty <laughs> melt. I don't really want to discuss this a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. She was really bad. But then, 
She said, no, 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 no. You know what we can do? We can put the chicken on the rye bread. I said, that's what I said. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's what I've been trying to say. It says it on the menu. I know what it says on the menu. <laughs> I, I was thinking, okay. I was thinking, okay, do I walk out at this point or yeah, not? Yeah, we, we should have walked out. I was out. thinking, okay, maybe I'll just leave. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. So I guess the topic is uh, a couple, it's twofold. It's what kind of things would make you leave an establishment, whether it's a restaurant, a movie theater, what kind of things would make you leave? Oh, I like that. You know, what kind of things can somebody do? What kind of things would happen <laughs> that make you say, you know what? I'll see you later. I'll, I'll be right back. And I real will be right back. <laughs> Fox News Radio, I'm Steve Rappaport. Under fire in Ferguson, Missouri. Police using smoke bombs and tear gas on protesters outraged by the killing of an unarmed black teenager. We're working very closely now with the uh, Department of Justice Community Relations Office, and they're making recommendations for us for training and things to work and get involved with the community that is at odds with us now. Police Chief Thomas Jackson won't reveal the name of the cop who shot Michael Brown. Heavy flooding across the U.S. blamed for at least four deaths. New York's Long Island saw a record downpour yesterday, more than 13 inches of rain. And another college football player comes out. Saying it benefits his peace of mind, Arizona State University offensive lineman Chip Serafin has revealed he is gay. And Serafin becomes the first active major college football player to come out. Fox Radio's Ron Flatter. Fox News. We report you decide there's more to fox news radio than meets the ear go behind the headlines and join the conversation on the hottest stories of the day on the fox news radio facebook page be a part of the fox news radio facebook fan community post comments and tell us your opinions see behind the scenes photos and videos and post your reactions to the stories that matter to you click the like button on facebook and connect with breaking news and features like fox in the fast lane house call for help and more go to facebook.com slash fox news radio Weeknights, we're busting out a brand new lineup. First, market fraud, government abuse, corruption. At five, nothing's off limits on money with Melissa Francis. Then, from bloated bank fees to consumer scams. At six, Jerry's exposing the issues impacting your wallet. Plus, get smart market insight and trusted analysis you won't find anywhere else. At seven, Lou Dobbs is all business. And the first and last name in business, Cavuto. Shedding light on the biggest stories, making headlines at eight. Only on the Fox Business Network. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello, Gorgeous Salon. We are located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. I'd like to invite you to stop by and see our new boutique area and meet our staff of professional stylists. Here at Hello Gorgeous, we are ready to update your look with the latest trends. And with summer here, it's the perfect time to brighten up your look. So make your appointment now for those highlights and Brazilian blowout. But don't stop there. We are a full service salon offering manicures, pedicures, and facials also. So if you've been searching for a salon to call your own, come and see us at Hello Gorgeous Salon. We are located at 48 South Magnolia Avenue in downtown Ocala right next to the Marion Theater. So call today and set up your appointment at Hello Gorgeous Salon at 351-5358. That's 351-5358. And don't forget, we also do men and children's cuts too. 351-5358. Hello Gorgeous Who would you feed if you had 50 chicken sandwiches from Chick-fil-A? WOCA and Chick-fil-A in the Paddock Mall have teamed up to reward one organization with 50 chicken sandwiches as a way of saying thanks for the great work that organization is doing in our community. And we need your help. See, there are so many great people doing great things that we need nominations. You can nominate your own organization or any organization you choose. Simply send an email to WOCA at WOCA.com. And in 350 words or less, tell us why the organization you are nominating should receive 50 free chicken sandwiches from WOCA and Chick-fil-A at the Paddock Mall. We'll review your nominations and then select one deserving organization each month. We'll announce the winner and even read the winning entry on the air. Make sure to include the contact name and phone number of the organization that you are nominating. And thanks from your friends at WOCA and Chick-fil-A in the Paddock Mall. How good does it get? Golf has long been considered to be sports' most prestigious game, and WOCA has your connection to everything in the golf world. 
every first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. Tune in for Let's Talk Golf with your host, PGA professional and teacher to the stars, Jim Beckett, and operations manager for the links of Spruce Creek South, Darren Irwin, right here on The Source. Men, do you know your testosterone level? Are you experiencing decreased energy levels or unusual sleeping problems? Have you noticed you have less strength or endurance, decreased sex drive, increased irritability or depression? If so, you may be experiencing problems with low testosterone. If you're interested in a free testosterone screening, please call Renstar Medical Research at 352-629-5800. Again, that number is 352-629-5800. Thank you, buddy. I don't know my testosterone level. I don't even know what it should be. I I think we are at the mercy of our chemicals. We're at the mercy of our hormones. (laughs) If if it wasn't for the hormones, (laughs) I wouldn't think the way I think. I wouldn't do the things I do. That's what they all want us to believe. Yeah. Do you believe that? I just I just just put on Google. I love Google. I mean, you can put anything in there. (laughs) What should my testosterone level be? I typed in there. Well, I just think if something works, answer? everything should be fine, if right? If something works. If, if it works, it <laughs> should be fine, right? You shouldn't worry about it. Testosterone no levels in Tulsa, Oklahoma yeah. range from 348 to 11 to 1,197 NGs per DLs. Whatever that means. Now, does that include those guys that are taking Viagra? What does that tell you? I mean, you have to have, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, oh, here oh, here we go. Age is, uh, <laughs> where am I on this subject? <laughs> I'm listening to the commercial and I'm Googling. Yeah. Well, we men? should have questions. Get, buddy says, men, do you know your testosterone level? I'm, no. I don't know it. I don't know how many people know it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, if it works, <laughs> you're fine, right? Gee. I, uh, there's, I don't know. I can't even read this chart here. I don't even know what it should be. Anyway. I don't think we've ever asked all those fe- fellas that we've no. interviewed. You know, ask, I'm going to ask every sleep. man from now on. There do you, you know the testosterone level? Well, well yes, I do. I'll be surprised. <laughs> we can start today. The <laughs> veterans are coming in. I, uh, no way. No? I'm not asking them. <laughs> hey, Sergeant Curley, what's your testosterone <laughs> level? Ah, uh, you joke. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, you joke, Larry. <laughs> He's packing yeah, again. Funny, man. <laughs> the funniest story I ever I can tell you all from the veterans show i gotta tell you now robin just reminded me of i gotta tell you this story (laughs) we were doing the veterans show this was years ago and um this was in the old studio in the cascades and there was a gentleman in here uh, as a guest of theirs i don't remember who he was or what he was presenting but he was he was kind of anti-gun yeah or, or he was in favor of some gun regulations and and they were being really polite to him listening to what he had to say And then he just kind of flippantly said, because really, why would anybody need to carry a gun? Who carries a gun anyway? And they all, (laughs) everybody in the room patted their leg and said, I got mine. I got mine. I got my gun. (laughs) That's right. I was was the only one in the room besides that man without a gun. (laughs) Did you feel left out? (laughs) No, I felt safe. I said, hey. All these guys have a gun. That's right. That's if anybody right. comes in here right now, I feel sorry for that guy. Exactly. That's, that's like the frog in the chicken coop. You're gone. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, it was a funny, funny story. About yeah, it is. Well, it's you know, a true story. I, I often think you know, we've been doing this so long, and it's it's funny how stories come back to me. Yeah. Um, from things we've done in the past and Mm -hmm. and i've often thought i should write these down because they are kind of funny they are um and gosh since i'm on this roll i'll tell this other one okay (laughs) many of you may remember a a disc jockey by the name of willie johnson Mm -hmm. willie johnson did the um the sunday morning uh, gospel train program on wtmc which is now gone yeah and uh, and Willie was a celebrity in town. I mean, he played gospel music every Sunday morning, mm-hmm. and he was listened to everywhere. I'd drive around on a Sunday morning. I, I'd hear people in their cars listening to him and everything. Mm-hmm. Well, when I started working there, um, Willie liked to go to the hospital for to eat. I don't know if he had a lady there. I don't I don't know, but yeah, but he liked to eat at the hospital. Yeah, yeah, at, at the hospital. Uh, what do you call that diner? Whatever it is up in there, the restaurant. In the, I don't That's remember. right. Maybe it was cheaper. I don't know. Uh, so we had this half hour between the end of his show and the beginning of the next program, which was also a religious program. Mm-hmm. And my job was to fill in that half hour, plus, you know, push the buttons and 
insert the commercials back in those days. Anybody that knows radio knows that it was all on tape back then and cartridges. So it was a pretty simple job, in other words. And, and it was my decision what to put in that half hour. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to keep doing what Willie has done, and I'll just play the gospel music. I'll just take from his library of music, and I'll just keep playing. And every once in a while, I'll come on the radio and say, you know, that was, you know, the name the artist, name the song, and then move on to the next one, just like a regular yeah, district. Yeah, you were exciting. Yeah, I was, called, I was called the hippest white man in town, by the way. Yes, by, you were. They called up and By one caller. But anyway. But anyway, so, um, so we worked with Willie for a long time. Now, just two doors down, I also worked for um, the Southeast Agnet. Yeah. And the Southeast Agnet also owned the Gator Network. Yep. Okay. So now you, now you need to know this. So I worked for the radio station where Willie worked. And then I also worked for the Southeast Agnet and the Gator Network. Yeah. Two doors down. In the same building. Same building. Yeah. yeah. Tiny little shack in Very the middle of the, <laughs> of the field. <laughs> <In a> field. <laughs> yeah. So though the, the guys who worked over there, both of them were named Steve. Yeah. Steve and Steve. Okay. <laughs> well, one of the Steves had a cat named Willie. Mm-hmm. Now, I did not know that he had a cat named Willie. <laughs> I had no clue. So I'm working, doing Willie's job Sunday morning, and then... Mm-hmm. Sunday morning over in the Gator Network part, here comes the, the, the Steve who owns the cat named Willie. Yeah. And, um, and Steve is telling me that yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> Willie swallowed a string. Yeah. And I said, oh, my God, how'd that happen? He says, I don't know. But it was a little piece of it hanging out of the corner of his mouth. You have to know, he's talking about his cat, but yeah. I'm picturing Willie Johnson. Yeah. By the way, he's <laughs> departed, so rest yeah. in peace, Willie. But I, but, so but this is a fun story. It is. So wow. he's got, he says, yeah, Willie had a, how do you know he swallowed the string? He said, Willie had a piece hanging out of the corner of his mouth. <laughs> I said, my God, didn't he know? <laughs> didn't he know there was a piece of string hanging out of his mouth? No, he didn't know. I said, wow. So he said, so I pulled it. He said, I said, you pulled it? You grabbed the string? Yeah. <laughs> And, and you wouldn't believe how much string I pulled out of his stomach. I yeah. said, really? <laughs> he just let you pull that string? Yeah, that must have been, <laughs> must have been 10 feet of string. <laughs> I said, you pulled 10 feet of string out of Willie's stomach? <laughs> that is so gross. gross. That is nasty. That is weird. Yeah. So I went back to my little cubicle over there where WTMC was, and I'm continuing my job. And I can't stop thinking about this. Then the other Steve comes in. Yeah. And we're chatting. Hey, don't good, good, good. I did. St- I said to him, "Did did the other Steve tell you that he pulled the string <laughs> out, out of Willie?" <laughs> he said, "No." I said, "Yeah." <laughs> he had a string hanging out of his mouth, and then he was pulling it out. He got ten feet of string out of Willie, and he goes, "Oh my god, <laughs> that's the craziest thing I ever heard." Yeah. <laughs> now that Steve went to go do his job. Well, they were better friends with each other than I was with them. All of a sudden, it occurred to the second Steve <laughs> that the first Steve has a cat named, named <laughs> Willie. And he comes back into me. He said, it's a cat. I said, what's a cat? He said, the Willie. It's not, he's not talking about Willie Johnson. He's talking about his cat. <laughs> Isn't that the craziest thing? That's the craziest thing. Yeah. <laughs> then you did that picture. Oh, oh yeah, and then, then, then I made fun of it yeah, for a little while. Yeah, yeah, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, did I promise I was going to talk about something else? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, all over the place. All right, all right there, there's a couple of ribbon cuttings. I need to tell you this first. The Ocala, Marion County Chamber and Economic Partnership ribbon cuttings. Mm-hmm. Well, there's one today. Today is oh, at a restaurant, yes. Yes. You want to go to these ones. Yes, you do. <laughs> this is at the Hardwood Smokehouse. They're having their uh, ribbon cutting today at 4 o'clock. And they are located in the Heathbrook Shopping Plaza mm-hmm. over there by... Out on top of the world by Dillard's and all that area right there. Oh, that's called Heathbrook. Top of the World? Okay, that's Heathbrook. Well, it's he- Top of the World. If you pass it, you'll hit Top of the World. It's, it's just east of Top of the World. Heathbrook. Oh, okay. That's Heathbrook, huh? I thought Heathbrook was the marketplace. That, um, it is. It is. But, I mean, if people are driving and you don't pay attention, to, you know, to Dillard's and you go way past that, then that's... Isn't this, like, right near the interstate? It's it's about uh, 
two miles west of the interstate on the left hand so what's side. the place called right near the interstate what's that place called uh oh that's where cole's department store is it's right. got a different name marketplace oh market street marketplace at he market street at heathbrook and then you've got heathbrook so it's on the left it's it's, it's on the well no wonder it's confusing it's it's what what is that the 30 some hundred block 5400 5400 block okay look 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 for uh, uh 54th avenue and then you'll find it okay left hand side so no 5400 problem. southwest college road yeah. is where this is and then tomorrow yeah. there's a ribbon cutting here at the paddock mall at the runner's pace and uh, this is uh, a new running store. The ribbon cutting is at 4.30, and from 5 till 9, you're invited to a big party they're having with food, fun, drink, music, raffles, giveaways. you got to check it out. New store right here in the mall next to Spencer Gifts. And uh, I promise, we'll talk about noise ordinances. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunshine mixing with clouds today with a couple of thunderstorms around this afternoon. The high 80 to 92, then partly cloudy tonight with a thunderstorm around early on near the coast, low 73 to 77. Partly sunny tomorrow with a couple of thunderstorms popping up in the afternoon, high 86 to 90. And for Saturday, times of sun and clouds, a couple of showers and a thunderstorm mainly in the afternoon, the high 87 to 91. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. I'm Diane Schreer, candidate for school board Marion County District 4. I'm asking you to vote for me in this primary. A healthy economy requires a healthy school system. Our children are our future. We must improve the quality of education so our children can compete, not only in the local and national arena, but globally as well. This is a nonpartisan election, and you may vote for me throughout the county. Again, please vote for me. I'm the best qualified candidate and totally committed to improving education here. I'm Diane Schreer, candidate for school board Marion County District 4. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. We should eat our larger meals earlier in the day so we have energy and eat our smallest meal at night so the body can focus on sleeping. Successful relationships aren't supposed to be perfect. They require vulnerability. Telling yourself that a guy isn't good enough, our expert says you're really just giving yourself an excuse to stop trying. Couples should send two texts a day that provoke interest. Like, I want to tell you about this cool vacation idea I have. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Sign up for this year's Marion County Heart Walk and be part of a local movement that's helping others live longer, healthier lives. Join me, Corey Poole, your 2014 Marion County Heart Walk chairman, and walk with me on Saturday, October the 4th at the Baseline Road Trailhead. It's a free event promoting physical activity and heart-healthy living. To find out how you can help fight the number one killer of all Americans, visit us online at marionheartwalk.org. It's rodeo time in Florida. The 32nd annual Ocala Shrine Rodeo returns with the best of man, muscle, and a stampede of horsepower. August 29th and 30th, witness America's number one sport and the greatest show on dirt. Showtime, 7.30 each night at the Southeastern Livestock Pavilion. For rodeo information, call 352-402-8808. August 29th and 30th, don't miss the Ocala Shrine Rodeo. You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. You're listening to WOCA. Ocala. Thank you. Uh, 12 minutes before 8 o'clock, 75 degrees on the 14th day of August 2014. Thank you for tuning in and uh, keep your radio down just a little bit. It's just to keep it. You don't want to have a, too, you don't want to be too noisy. No, you right, certainly so don't. I, I want to talk about the do- noise ordinances. I kind, okay. of, kind of used a lot of time just yapping about my funny memory stuff. <laughs> uh, the the uh, city council is considering, um, and I guess next Tuesday they're going to try to de- define what would be inappropriate noises um susan latham carr who uh, has been a writer for the star Banner for a very long time wrote an article that uh, gives me the information i'm telling you so thank you susan i used to see her jogging all the time yeah what constitutes a noise violation will be defined more clearly susan writes in the star banner um and the uh, city attorney uh, and the city council will make that will consider those things on tuesday they want to uh, make some changes to the noise ordinance that includes specific guidelines so that law enforcement officers will know, you know, when somebody's breaking the law. 
Um, the, the one thing I wondered about, uh, for instance, if a noise occurs in a public right of way between the hours of sunset and sunrise, in other words, at nighttime, and is plainly audible at a distance of 25 feet or more, it is a violation. Okay. But I don't know but how loud it has to be. Uh, between the hours of sunrise and sunset, in other words, daytime hours, a violation occurs if the noise is plainly audible at a distance of 50 feet or more. Oh, gosh. How far is it from here to that wall? That's about 50 feet, I would yeah, think. Yeah, I would think so. So a lawnmower would be violating the, the ordinance, right? Yep. But it doesn't say how loud it has to be, just if you can hear it plainly. A public right-of-way is defined... As a street, avenue, boulevard, road, highway, sidewalk, alley, or easement mm -hmm. owned, leased, or controlled by the city. Yep. A violation would be a misdemeanor punishable by a maximum fine of $500 and or up to 60 days in jail. Gee, three months less than if you had baggy pants. <laughs> 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 you better not have baggy pants and be noisy. That's right. You're in trouble. Uh, but but I, I made fun of the baggy pants thing. I'm really not making fun of this one. I think I think sometimes people are a little bit uh, you know rude, which is kind of where we're going at the after the top of the hour. People who are rude, but, but it is rude. I think to be yeah. un, unnecessarily noisy. Mm -hmm. But 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 the the challenge. It, okay, there's no argument that sometimes too much noise is is rude. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is how do you define and how do you de how do you measure? Um, yeah, good question. So this is what they're up to. So I went to see what other cities were doing about this. Okay. And I found some in the state of Florida. I found some all over the place, and I just want to mm -hmm. tell you what they the others are saying. Okay. Hold on, I got to get this testosterone page off of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, in Anchorage, Alaska, um, this is their noise ordinance thing. Um, excessive sound and vibrations are a serious hazard to public health they have in their ordinance. Um, it infringes upon the, the quality of life and a body of science and technology exists by which excessive sound and vibration can be significantly abated. Um... And then they go on to define it. Uh, the following words, terms, and phrases. Wait, 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 wait. Let me jump to this. Motor vehicles have to be under a certain sound level. Motor boats have to be under a certain sound level. Motorcycles, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, oh, noise. Um, it's rid of the Harleys. There's, there's a noise. Let's see. There's a Kinetics Noise Control Company that actually sells things so you can quiet things down. Now, this would be for the sensible, reasonable person who says, oh, you know what? I got, a, I got a loud lawnmower. I got to lower the sound of it. I got to lower the volume. Right? Yeah, but he's cutting his own grass on his own lawn. Yeah, but you can hear it 50 feet away into the oh, street. Oh, okay. So if you get, okay. Yeah. Um, in, the, in Marion County, where did I put that one? Um, the, the Board of County Commissioners in 2008 drafted an ordinance that, uh, that kind of explained it all. I remember going through this. It just seems like yesterday. When I when I looked it up, I couldn't believe it was uh, 2008. But um, let's see. A sound-producing device could be a loudspeaker, a public address system, a radio, a tape recorder, musical instruments that are amplified or unamplified, which means that our busking efforts could be squelched. 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 Yeah, Good we word. Might, we won't be able to uh, raise money. Sirens and bells are also considered... Uh, potential violating instruments motor vehicles without um sirens yeah i don't know how they're going to do this see yeah this is the problem vehicles. i'm not opposed to it mm -hmm. uh here are the prohibitions according to the county back in 2008 55 decibels uh at any time between 10 p.m and 7 a.m or 65 decibels at any time between 7 a.m and 10 p.m um, if it's plainly audible any time of the day between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Um, or plainly audible during the day time with the higher decibel amount. So I wonder how, how loud a 65 decibels is. I mean, what's that yeah. the equivalent of? Yeah. So what, what's going to happen then? Like if, if, you know, like there's, there's this neighborhood mm 
and everybody decides to go out at uh, 8 a.m. Saturday morning, rev up their lawnmowers and mow their grass at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. That's See, I, not, we, you know, how can you discern but, who's but, making the most But the noise? thing is this, Robin. I mean, you're saying it as if you're opposed to the ordinance. Uh-huh. I'm really not. I think the ordinance is a good thing. Mm-hmm. I just think I'm just trying to think for them, I guess, or try to put myself in their shoes. Yeah. Um, here's here's a, here's a chart I have here of of how much how many decibels a jet flying over at 1,000 feet produces 110 decibels. Okay. So does a rock band. Uh huh. Wow, really? A rock band is as loud as a jet at 1,000 feet. Wow. A gas lawnmower is 100 decibels. That's it. Three feet away. From three feet away, uh-huh. a gas lawnmower is 100 decibels. A blender, a food blender at three feet away is 90 decibels. Oh. So that would be over the 60. <laughs> oh, that's right. You can't make any margaritas anymore. Outside. Outside. A diesel know. truck from 50 feet away at 50 miles per hour is 80 decibels. Mm-hmm. Yikes. How do you govern this thing? Yeah. Uh, a garbage disposal at three feet away is 80 decibels. There you go. Close 85. your windows if you're going to squash up your garbage. Uh, a typical urban area, just standing outside, <laughs> is 75 decibels at any given time in, 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 the, in a noisy urban area. A vacuum cleaner 10 feet away is 75 decibels. Gee. Normal speech at three feet away is 70 decibels. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Normal speech at three feet away is 70 decibels. Of course, this is 50, de- 50 feet away. A gas lawnmower at 100 feet away is 75 decibels, or 72, 72. So three feet away, a gas lawnmower is 100. Then you get uh, another 90, uh, 97 feet away. You get 100 feet away, and you're already violating it because you're 100 feet away, uh-huh. and you're 72 decibels, which is more than 60. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Um, a dishwasher would be safe. Oh, good. <laughs> Gonna leave my window open when I run my dishwasher. Then a broadcast recording studio. Yes. <laughs> it says here eighteen decibels. Really? Wow. Our speaker out there is eighteen decibels. <laughs> well, I doubt that is. I think that's louder than eighteen decibels. <laughs> anyway, so that's 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 what they're considering, and I and uh, I I don't disagree with them. I think it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. You, ha- you have to have some way of regulating it because it is, especially at nighttime. If, if you oh, have yeah, people nighttime. out there with these, there was a story, I think Susan included a story um, in here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so to me, it all boils down to common sense. If I'm driving down the road and I have my radio loud in my car and I'm at a traffic light, I turn it down because I know it's annoying when I have my windows open. In January, an Ocala police officer gave Terrence Rashad Woods a notice to appear for allegedly playing his car radio very loudly at 2 a.m. in the parking lot of a BP gas station on Pine Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's what Susan Latham Carr wrote in the Star Banner article. The notice to appear. So in other words, uh, I don't want to read her whole article on the air, but like, like we used to do. Yeah, we did. But... Uh, first. In the order, um, let's see, the, the, it was acknowledged that the city's ordinance, which goes back to 1961, mm-hmm. was to protect citizens from unduly disruptive and harmful noise. But since then, both the state and federal Supreme Courts have specified and changed the requirements for ordinances of this. Wow. So this is, a, this is a tough thing they're trying to challenge. Anyway, the city council will meet at 4 p.m. on Tuesday uh, to discuss what kind of what kind of rules would regulate something that would be too loud. And, and I, you know, it happens uh, not too much, I don't think. But yeah. every once in a while, there'll be some kid in a truck or a car or something like that, and the music is just blaring out of it. And Yeah. And... You know, I wouldn't want to see that kid go to jail for sixty days. That's Mm-mm. that's my feeling. I mean, I wish he would say, you know, it's a little. Bit, I'm, I'm being a little bit inconsiderate. Yeah, common I mean, sense. Yeah, that would make sense. But sixty days in jail for that that, that, that doesn't even seem right. I mean, I, I guess if you had three or four or five warnings, you know, uh, you're not paying yeah. attention. We've uh, we've got on record that you've been told five times or something like that. Yeah, that I could understand. Uh, but if you are noisy and you want to try to regulate it, there's all kinds of devices you can buy. Mm-hmm. To 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 uh, 
quiet the area. And also you can get some headphones to wear if you don't want to be bothered by the noise. That's right. Those noise, uh, what do you call it, cancellation headphones. Yeah, unless you're driving, then they'll give you a ticket the for that. The city of Miami says it is unlawful to make any loud, unnecessary, excessive, or unusual noise in the city. <laughs> That's all it says. <laughs> It's, it's, it's this is right to, to the point. Yeah, this is right to the point. All right, well, they're, they'll be figuring that out, and I guess we'll let you know whatever they figure out. It is going to be interesting, though, because I know somebody will challenge it somehow. Somebody will say, there's a lawnmower, mm -hmm. there's a, a guy playing an accordion. <laughs> That's right. They're raising money there's, for stuff. There's something going on. All right, we'll take a little break. We've got to uh, move forward, and then we'll talk about things that might be so rude that you would just leave an establishment like a restaurant. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. A rescue mission in Iraq for refugees said to be far less likely after feedback from a special forces team. Defense Department officials say there are fewer religious minorities trapped on that mountain than originally feared. And they say they're in better shape than previously believed due to humanitarian aid drops and the airstrikes on Sunni targets. Therefore, it may not require a U.S.-led evacuation. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland, violent clashes... Of 